I'm back and it's great to be back. I hope you guys have been looking forward to this video because I know I have. Today we are going to be doing the shadow art challenge. You're probably wondering what that is. Well, it's not an anime fighting style as it may sound like, which would be awesome. So if there's any animators watching this, a little bit of credit, please. Just a little bit, please. On to it. The shadow art challenge is where we're going to grab random objects that I just have laying around on my desk. We're going to put them together to form a shadow. We're going to shine a light and we're going to see what the shadow forms. And then we are going to draw an outline of that shadow while everything's put together there being projected onto the desk. And we're going to draw the outline on the paper. We're going to pull everything away. And then we're going to make a piece of artwork out of that shadow. If y'all want to try this at home, you can do whatever materials you like. Me personally, I like to use ink because that's my thing. Also, if y'all haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos like this and hit the notification button so you're notified immediately as soon as they are posted. As you can see, I'm starting to do daily uploads, the daily doodles. I hope y'all are enjoying those. And remember, every time you comment on a video, you're entered for a piece of artwork. We have to have 50 unique comments. That means 50 different people have to comment before I can do a giveaway. Once we get 50 different comments, I'll be doing the giveaway and every comment that is made on the videos will be an entry towards that giveaway. But that only counts for one comment per video. So if we do 20 videos, you commented 20 times, you're entered 20 times. But if you comment five times on one video, that's just one entry. But with that said, let's get on to the art, shall we? When I got started on making this video, it was very sudden. As a matter of fact, I was right in the middle of making another video whenever I got started on this one. So there was no practice beforehand and nothing on standby for me to use for my shadow. I was hoping that would really contribute to the legitimacy of the challenge. The only things I had near me at the time were just some basic things. So I took a mouse, a battery charger, and a pen and I got to work to create my shadow. I followed the outline of the shadows very carefully before removing everything and started on what I'm hoping is a good piece of art. The intimidating part of this challenge is, is that art can take a lot of planning and preparation and then again some people are just struck with inspiration and can immediately get to work. You also have the people who just put pen to pe or pencil or brush to paper or canvas and just see where it takes them. When working on something like this for me, it could be intimidating as a person as well as an artist. The unknown has always frightened people since, well, the human race began. So to dive in and start making a piece of art that people are going to see without any relative idea of what's it going to be can be pretty scary. When you can overcome such fears and do something challenging as this, it can make you more confident and a better for your creativity with your art. It forces you to see things differently, like when you lay on the ground and look at the clouds, picturing the shapes of them as different creatures, animals, people. That is to me creativity at its core, is the imagination that we generate ourselves of what we see, what, we, what our eyes and our minds form. I hope that makes sense to y'all. <laughs> it makes sense to me, I hope it makes sense to y'all. Um, when I first seen the shape to this, luckily I knew exactly what direction I was going to take it. I thought about the woman who lived in a shoe, and I put that idea with the giant mushrooms on Minecraft. Obviously, my mind works in very strange ways. And thank God for that, because I don't know if I could have pulled off the idea if it didn't. If you're not familiar with the rhyme of the woman who lived in the shoe, it goes like this. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread, then kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. It's a very short rhyme, but very memorable from my childhood. If you are not familiar with the giant mushrooms from Minecraft, then you're totally missing out on an amazing game. I love Minecraft, it's an awesome game. Even as a full grown adult, I love Minecraft. It's, it's fun, it's creative. You can do plenty of things that are both artistic and create some architecture in there. It's just, it's a really fun game. It's a lot, a lot of great things you could do with it. Anyways, back to this. When I was actually working on this, you know, back to the Minecraft thing, right when I was saying we we're going back to the piece, listen to me. 
I was actually tempted to draw a creeper peeking out around the mushroom, but I didn't have anything from the shadow to make such a thing. I probably could have anyway, but I wanted to stay as close to doing the challenge with what I got from the shadow as I could. And the materials I used in this were primarily Micron ink pens, a big mechanical pencil, and a combination of Chameleon and Prismacolor markers. I know I have Copics, but I thought I would try to mix it up a bit. Sometimes going outside of your realm of comfort can actually help you really improve on your skills because it makes you try to view things a different way. It makes you adapt to what you have to create what you are trying to make. And when you're forced to adapt to create things with materials that you're not very familiar with, it can really push you to your limits, really make you think differently and possibly give you new ideas down the line. One day I might be thinking of that one time I drew a mushroom house with some Prismacolor markers and chameleon markers and I might think of something really cool I could do with those materials because I remember how they blended nicely together and everything on the paper. And that could result into something great. So I encourage all of you, try new things, try new materials. Always push the limits of your art. It's the best way to get the best results. I promise it. Back to the piece. I know I said that before, but this time I'm for real. Whenever I was thinking of a mushroom, you know, mushrooms never exactly grow straight up. So that really helped with the slope that was on this mushroom that I'm working on here. Now, I've never drawn a mushroom before, so there wasn't really anything from directly I could reference because I wasn't trying to pull anything up on the internet because I was trying to be as specific about this just straight out of the head as I could be. I started off with my basic pencil outline as I usually do in most pieces like this and then I moved on to going on with my micron ink pens and I went on to doing color and as I'm sure you all are used to seeing in my videos. Now there is something new I've got in mind for these videos, but I'm going to bring that up later on during the end card of this. But with that said, I do want to talk about the challenge itself, now that we're actually part of the way through it. I feel like this challenge is a great way to make people look at things in a different way that they normally wouldn't, which, like I said before, really boosts that creativity, really forces you out of your element. Sometimes that's what art's all about, is getting out of your comfort zone. It's about creating ideas, making people think. Whenever people watch people make art, I've noticed this, because people will actually sit there and watch me at a coffee shop when I'm drawing something, and they think I don't notice, but I notice you, and it's okay. You like to watch. <laughs> all right, anyway. Um, I, um... I'll notice them watching and I feel like their minds are just kind of trying to grasp on what I'm actually doing there. You know, I'm sure whenever they're watching, their mind's clicking like a hundred times a minute thinking, you know, this is what he's drawn. No, this is what he's drawn. No, that's what he's drawn. You see, you're making them think. You're making them look at it. Well, you're not making them look at it. That would be awful. But no, you're making them think as they're looking at it, trying to comprehend what you're drawing. Now, most of the time, people will just give up the effort and actually come over to me and be like, so what are you drawing there? You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I saw you over there. I saw you staring me down. I knew you were going to ask. And that's okay. I love it when people come over here to me and ask me about my artwork because I'm so passionate about it. I love talking about it. Some people think that I'm bragging, but I'm really not. I just get excited. I get excited about my own art and that's an awesome feeling if you create art and you don't feel that I feel sorry for you yeah you know, I feel sorry for the people who don't understand that it's just awesome when you just love doing something so much the mere thought of it makes you excited I've got ideas for videos I'm wanting to tell you guys about right now and I can't because then it wouldn't be a surprise and I went back to talking about the piece and I jumped right back off of talking about the piece. With the colors on this piece, I actually used about two different types of red. I don't have many Prismacolor markers, so I was very limited on the colors. 
but I had the exact reds that I felt would be perfect for it. So I went ahead and used those. And with the chameleon markers, I actually used skin tone chameleon markers for the slope and the underbelly, I guess we'll call it, of the mushroom. The underbelly. Mushrooms have underbellies. Sounds like a crime syndicate. They just meet under that. They just meet under mushrooms. That's, that's what they do. That'd be like a Smurf's underbelly. They, they meet under mushrooms. <laughs> Could you imagine a Smurf mafia? Like just meeting under mushrooms, making their crime deals, and trying to <laughs> trying to figure out like we got a hit out on Papa Smurf. Like why am I even why am I even thinking of it? Oh man, I I don't know if this is gonna make it into the video. Uh, no, nah, it's going to. It's got it. No, nah, this is this is good stuff. Anyways, um, when it came to the shading, I actually used some cool grays. Now, if you're not familiar with the different types of grays. There's cool grays, which are kind of have a blue tint to them. And then there's warm grays that have a slight red tint to them. There's neutral grays where they're just plain gray. Now there are other grays when you get into the Copic markers and those ones can get a bit more complicated. The color differences on them are not very vast because they got like toner gray as well as neutral gray and then they got French grays, like it gets, it gets kind of odd. I feel like the French grays kind of have like a bit of a green tint to them, but that's just me. But the grass on this one, I actually used like three different types of green. I used the heavy dark green and two other lighter greens so I could get a nice blending to it. When blending with markers, it's always best to start with your lightest color, go over it with your lightest color, and then take your darkest color and go over it with your darkest color where you're wanting the darker color to be. Then you take your medium color and you go over the in-between and then you go over with your lighter color and you go over with your darker color again where you want your darker to be. And eventually it all blends out and where it's all gradient cut type, you know what I mean? But sometimes you don't want that gradient. Sometimes the gradient isn't what you need sometimes you need some solid differences in the colors you need some solid contrast especially when it comes to grass i can tell you right now that grass is not a perfect gradient you'll have some grass out there that's dead grass that will be almost yellow then you'll have the dark green healthy grass and then you'll have like young grass it's like a light green young grass the grass that's in its prime <laughs> It's looking towards a brighter future. <laughs> Just to be mowed down by the man. <laughs> all right. All right. I think that's about it for this. Um, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this drawing. I got some more info about some other videos I'm going to be doing right after this. And again, I'm really glad to have you guys coming back to check this out. I really appreciate it. Thanks again. The Shadow Art Challenge. I love everything about this challenge. It forces you to look at things differently, to be a bit more creative, and I love how this came out. We've got the mushroom, I got love the little windows, I love the little door, and in a future video, I'm gonna be doing a video where I add on to past artwork and past videos. So this is definitely going to be jumping into that one, so keep an eye out for that video. In that video, we're probably going to add some background to this, maybe a little creature that would live in that house. It's going to be a lot of fun. Whether that video comes out in the next month or the next five months, I don't know. I'd like to have a good stockpile of art before we make that video so that way I can make it more satisfying. But once again, if you guys haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, so you guys will be notified immediately as soon as I post these videos and like this video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment and let me know what you think I should do for future videos. With that said, this has been the Shadow Art Challenge as seen by Austin. Thank you all for checking out this video. I have some other videos here I believe you all would enjoy. 
Be sure to comment, like this video, and subscribe if you haven't yet for a chance at some free merchandise or some free art. Sounds good, right? All right, you know what to do. See you later.